Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel and to this video that's gonna be a review roundup. I'm gonna do some housekeeping before I start, this is gonna be really quick. I have decided, I have decided that 2020 I am gonna do a review roundup every month. That is gonna be pretty much, except my monthly hauls, I'm also gonna do monthly review roundups and that's basically gonna be the only two series that I do on my channel. I love doing monthly hauls, it keeps me accountable for myself, for the amount of things that I put into my collection. Putting them all together and actually showing not only to you but to myself the sheer amount of products I'm putting into my collection, it's been helpful for me. It's been really good for me. So what I do is that I put all of the products that I get in a month, either by buying them or by getting them as PR, I put them in a big basket and I still use the things. I still use the things but when I use them I put them back in a basket and then I put the basket, I pull the basket at the end of the month and I just show you all the things that I have received or bought in the month. It's really helped me to check myself to not add too many things because sometimes half of the month has gone and the basket is full and I'm like wow wow so that's what I'm gonna try I try to like avoid that I guess I want to have I mean I'm still reviewing things I'm still gonna pull in things because I want to help you with your decisions but I need to also check myself but what I'm gonna do now is that the end of like for example now I'm gonna do a review roundup of some of the things that I've gotten in 2019 that I still haven't reviewed for you so that I can have a clean slate except the dubious place palace the six pants I'm gonna take that in my first review roundup of 2020 because I've only used them a little bit and I did receive them in January so I'm gonna I'm making an exception for them but I'm gonna review the things that I have left for 2019 but I'm gonna give myself a little time to use these products so at the beginning of February there's gonna be a January haul and in the beginning of March there's gonna be a February haul and then I'm also gonna re do a review roundup of all of the things that I bought or got in January so I have a proper time to use these things and then I, I think I'm gonna rank them. I think I'm gonna do a ranking of all the things I added and uh, like added to my collection. I might do some exceptions for PR that I like I didn't use or that I got like sometimes you get things in PR that you wouldn't have picked up yourself and I try to give them away so I'm not gonna include them. I'm not gonna force myself to try things that I actually am not interested in but that is my plan. Do give me some feedback down below. It is going to be a monthly series that I do here on my uh, channel, but it's going to start then in, in a month. So this is me reviewing things from December and my Black Friday haul that I haven't talked about yet. And I'm going to speed, speed through this and I'm not going to rank these because I haven't given that enough thought, but you get it, you get it. Let me start with something that's fairly easy and that is the uh, Glimmer Light palette by Nabla. This palette was sent to me as PR, I got the whole collection, I've already talked about the lippies, love them, and the palette, love it, but not exactly my color scheme. I do have videos up on both of them, I have a video ranking all the available eyeshadow palettes from Nabla if you want to see my thoughts on every eyeshadow palette from Nabla that is available. This one, I like it, but I don't like them as much as the skin glazing singles. So if you want to try a cheek product from Nabla, I do recommend those over this one. Not gonna lie, it's not bad, but it's just not as good as the skin glazing. You need a dense brush to use this. I'm gonna tell you that. This one has been in my collection for a bit and I didn't review it, but I'm gonna review it now. I do have a video swatching this, comparing it to the Colourpop 6 pen palette that's pretty similar to this one, and also doing a look going from day to night. If you're interested in a video like that, it's already live on my channel. This look, by the way, is already live on my channel as well. I will link it in the description box. This is a really nice palette. I really like the quality of this one. I have to say that this Dearest is one of the best taupe shadows I've ever tried in my life. This is a really nice palette. If you are looking for a cute little palette like this, highly recommend this one. I think you can buy it off the Sueva website and you think you can buy it out of European Sephora's that had Sueva. I bought this at Sephora Sweden. I don't know if this came to US, I'm not really sure, but like I said, you can buy it off the Sueva website. It's a beautiful little uh, six pan palette that has a mirror. Quality is really nice. Highly recommend this one if this is something that you are looking for. I thought it was a really nice palette. Ooh, in my Black Friday haul, I bought two new eye pencil formulas that I hadn't tried. I bought more colors of this and I bought one more color of this. I prefer the LA Girl Shockwave Neon Liners over the Dose of Colors ones. Which is weird because these are so affordable and these are not that affordable. I bought them off sale though. This one is in Cloud Wine and this one is in Fresh. These are beautiful. Highly recommend these if you want colorful liners. Highly recommend them. 
These are nice and they stay on my waterline. I don't have watery eyes though, but I will say that they are not as smooth and pigmented as these. You have to go over your line a bit with these and that makes me a bit like, why? Because these are more like expensive, but the packaging is gold. So they're not bad, but I do recommend these over that one, which is weird because it's so much less money, but yeah, here we are. I also got this one sent to me as PR. This is the Enchanted Mysteries by Linda Hallberg. This is the Swedish brand by Swedish influencer and makeup artist, celebrity makeup artist, Linda Hallberg. This is really good quality. This is, she has some quads like this before, but she has never had a quad that has both the formulas in one quad. And I like that. So I have two of the duochrome formula here on top, which has the embossing of like florally vines. And then you have the more geometric uh, print in the metallic formula here on the bottom. The metallic formula is more of a super smooth, highly pigmented, slightly more shimmery satin. It's not that foil finish that you might be like liquid metal. That It's not really that finish. The quality of this is amazing. There's nothing wrong with the quality, but this isn't that super glossy, high shine molten metal that we sometimes think about when we hear the word metal. If you think that this is your style, I'm gonna see if I can... Oh yeah, you can see here the, the, the duochrome in the purple to green because you see it turns purple and then Oh, you, yeah, you see it. And this one is a white with a blue shift and a light blue shift. Beautiful palette. I think this is really good, but I think you need to know what you're getting yourself into. It is not that glossy, like, foily, wet-looking metal. It's more like a sophisticated metal. It's a beautiful formula, though, but just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Oh, yeah. I got this one as well. This I got on Black Friday sale on Sephora Sweden. Sephora Sweden had 25% off everything during Black Friday and the Black Friday week. And I was like, that is a good sale. That's better than the uh, Rouge whatever sale in US. So I bought the Natasha Denona Foundation X. I bought this out of recommendation of Linda Halberg. Speaking of her palette, she loves this foundation and her skin always looks great. And I really like this. This makes my skin look like my skin, but better. I call this an editorial full coverage and I stand by that. It's very liquidy. You have to shake it, but it looks so nice on the skin. It holds up amazing. This is slightly a too dark shade for me. Uh, so I did have to use this when having a bit of self tanner on. I got 25W. Maybe I needed one shade down to be like my perfect no self tanner kind of a shade but it is stunning 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 foundation i really really love this it is said to be a full coverage i think matte foundation but it, it just looks like a natural finish and it's more like a medium like i said editorial <laughs> full coverage what, what is going on here why why am i looking like i just woke up I, I pretty much did just wake up but what's going on here can we talk about this oh my god okay okay and uh, so I really do recommend this one. I think it's a really nice one. Oh, let's talk about this one. This is the Jue Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. I heard a lot of people mentioning this as their best concealer ever. And it is probably the most high coverage concealer I've ever used in my life. You need the littlest, littlest of this to cover your whole existence to be honest. I got mine in chiffon. It's a great color for me. It is a light vanilla yellowy toned one. It's it's a warm one for sure. Beautiful concealer but not my favorite. It turns very cakey very fast. You need to use the littlest powder ever otherwise my pretty mature under eyes with some fine lines it's gonna look grandma like in a way that's yeah, I look like I'm dying. So I like it, but I don't love it. It's a bit of a tricky formula for me. And it also, I wore this, I brought this to San Francisco and I wore this when we went to the artificial rainforest thing in the Academy of Science, California Academy of Science Museum. There is a rainforest that they made inside, a dome you go in. Don't wear this if you have a very moist area around you. This, the moisture and the warmth in that like rainforest thing broke this down. It made it look like I had porridge under my eyes. Ricardo was like, what's going on under your eyes? You, you know it's bad. You, you know it's bad when even your significant under notices that something is wrong. That's when you know. 
that's when you know so I would not bring this on like a sun vacation I would not use this <laughs> if you have very mature under eyes and I would also not use this if you live in a very moist area I also wouldn't use this if you like using a lot of concealer on your eyes because this one it it goes overboard real fast let me tell you I want to talk about this palette real, real fast. This is the Colourpop Flutter By palette. I got sent this as a SPR from Colourpop. The packaging looks exactly the same as the palette. I'm saving the packaging because I'm going to give this palette away. It is a beautiful palette, although I hate the packaging with a passion because this glitter comes off. And now I'm going to have glitter everywhere. I'm already regretting this. This was a bad decision. Um, I saved the plastic for the same reason. I am going to give this palette away. It is a beautiful palette. Hate the packaging. The glitter goes everywhere. But the colors is that cool tone. Uh, here you can see cool toned mauve neutral palette. But it has, a, if you love these colors, you're going to love this palette. It is a great variation of tones, light to dark, middle tones, some more brownie, some more pinky, some more, more like this reddish whiny color or oh, whiny wine-ish maybe color there is a pressed glitter in here i haven't used that one i don't personally hate pressed glitters but i use them so seldom that i honestly don't want to see them in palettes i also feel like either do like a either do i save pressed glitters so that everyone feels safe using them when you put them in a palette or just do them as singles or in pots so that people can just entirely avoid buying them i don't like press glitters in palettes because it's such a um, water divider we would say in Sweden like people either love them or hate them and I don't think that they belong in a palette that is my personal opinion but I feel like this palette if you like neutrals if you like these tones this palette can take you from day to night it can take you from pink to brown I think you would like it because the quality is nice I have a video up using this palette I'll see if I can link some corresponding videos down below if you want to see them in action I'm gonna give this to someone who really loves neutrals which is not me. <laughs> you can see that about my gr green eye look. So it's not a bad palette. It's just not my cup of tea. Great quality though. Just not my cup of tea. When I got that, let me get those. When I got that palette, I also got to try for the first time the Velvet Blur. This one is in Common Clover. I got this set with all of them. I really like this formula. I was so intrigued to trying it and I'm so happy I did. This is a matte formula that it has a bit of almost like a silicone touch to it. It is not 100% matte, it has a bit of a, not sheen to it, but it's like some life to it. It is not 100% opaque. If you go over it several times, you can make it more opaque. I feel like this formula looks the best if you put some gloss or balm over it. Then it's going to look very natural. It wears nice and I do like this formula. I think that this is a good option if you like, if you don't like super stark lips. If you like just chugging something on going at your lips like this, maybe evening it out with your finger and then putting a balm over, I think you're gonna love this formula. Uh, I still have some shades to try, but I think I, I overall really like this formula and I understand at first I was like, why do we need another matte formula? And that's why I wanted to try this. But now that I've tried it, I realized that this is for people who don't like the super stark line. This is for people that like some color, but maybe not like full on color. I think that this is a really good everyday lipstick. It's also the kind of lipstick that you can put on while on the bus, just putting some on and just dabbing with your lip, like with your finger on your lips. And it's gonna look good even if it's not 100% even. So I think that this is a very effortless kind of a lipstick and it looks really good on the lips, especially when you get a bit of gloss or balm over to make it look like just natural and, and juicy. So yeah, I, I really do like this one, but if you're expecting, uh, if you like that super statement, high opaque kind of a color, maybe this formula isn't for you. Maybe you should try one of the other two uh, cream luxe formulas that Colourpop has. I'm going to quickly mention this one because I never got around to reviewing the Juvia's Place uh, foundation stick. I got this from Amy, uh, Amy Loves Makeup. She is on the Juvia's Place PR list and she gave me two shades that didn't fit her so that I could try. I do have an affiliate code though with Juvia's. It is Angelica if you want to try some things from them. It works on everything on their site including sale items. This one is in Nepal and this is is basically the shade I've been using. It is a really good shade for me. This foundation stick is really nice, but I need to set this with powder, otherwise it's gonna slip all over my face. The 
coverage is I would say like a medium and if you set it with a powder it's gonna look like fresh fresh natural thing if I set this with a powder it wears really nice throughout the day it looks really natural and soft and beautiful on the face but if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to set your face with powder you're not gonna like this one because it for me it is impossible to not set it and I usually do not set all my foundations with powder but this one I have to I have a very normal skin somewhat mature I have some fine lines sometimes foundation settles into my lines but this one if I don't set it, it's gonna be a mess. But I like it, and when I set it, it works. It's not my favorite foundation, but it definitely works for me. Let's talk about the ooh, the Lethal Cosmetics. Uh, I got the whole, wait, wait, wait. I got the whole Dream Sign collection sent to me from Lethal Cosmetics. When I'm saying the whole, I don't mean actually the whole. I got three lip glosses that I picked myself, and three highlighters that I picked myself. Uh, I think it's really nice that she didn't just send you all of them. Instead, she let you pick the shade that you thought that you were going to be most interested in so you don't have a lot of things laying around that you actually are not going to use. I picked three other lip glosses. I picked it in Sub-Zero, Paradox and Nova. Personally, I love these lip glosses. I brought both of these to San Francisco and I used both of them in San Francisco. They look really juicy on the lips. They do give quite a lot of color they look very glass-like and juicy on the lips and they do give more colors than, for example, the Colourpop glosses, the, the Juicy Tubes, but they still have the same kind of a feel, but not the, uh, the same kind of a look, not the feel, because these are more lighter and more watery and they don't have the mint. Uh, they smell, they smell like sweet, at least my smell like sweet and this paradox is my favorite it's like a burnt orange kind of a glow i will leave the video down below where i actually use all of these products because i have a video where i use them paradox is my favorite after that is nova both of these are beautiful this one i thought that this was going to be just a light tint where you can cool down the lip color and make it a bit more cool and grayish but it's actually quite purple so if you are into purple lips this could be a good gloss for you because this is truly a purple gloss. It's not 100% opaque, but if you like purple lips, I think you're really gonna like the Sub-Zero one. So I like the lip gloss formula. I think it's really nice. I think the absolute winner in this though is the highlighters. I swatched this highlighters first and I was like, oh, this this isn't gonna be good because they, they feel a bit dry and they don't swatch that impressive. But on the skin, these wavelength highlighters are Stunning. This one is in Quantum. I use this as a blush. It turns out like a rose gold, very sheeny on my uh, cheeks. I love it. This one in Ionic. Uh, and this is Ionic and what is this one called? Isotope. Isotope is the highlight, that, this one, the pale gold is the highlighting shade I like the most. Makes my skin look wet, glass-like, amazing. Love this. It's such a good highlighting formula. Uh, this brand is an indie brand from Germany. So if you're living in Europe, if even if you're not living in Europe, but if you're living in Europe and want to try something that you don't have to pay taxes on, highly recommend Lethal Cosmetics. This one in I Ionic is like a light peach, but this one turns very icy on me. So if you have a fair skin tone, I think you're gonna like uh, Ionic. For me, it's just... I have to use it very sparingly, otherwise it's going to look very icy on me. And then we have the palette. The palette is a really nice palette. This is the Dream Sign palette. It comes like this, uh, but it has like holes on the back where you can poke out the shadows. I feel like the shadows are the same as the Lethal Cosmetics shadows usually are, which is pigmented, beautiful, lovely. These like metallic here, uh, they're so pretty. Like I said, I'll have the video down below where I'm using this palette love the Lethal Cosmetics shadows and this is no exception. I like that you can poke them out and put them in whatever you want to. You can also buy a palette like this empty and put in your own shades and make your own little palette. I love the way that like Lethal Cosmetics has put up like how you mix and match their shadows on their side is lovely. I love it. I only have one thing left to review and that is the uh, products that I bought from Jaclyn Cosmetics. Uh, I'm also going to review the brushes. I have them here somewhere. I bought three bundles from Jaclyn uh, when she released the new 
highlighters. So I let me see if I can get the brushes. As you see, all these brushes have been used, and this is how you got the product. So I bought a bundle with the palette, which is the light palette in Flash, and the brush that is called J02, which is the highlighting brush to be used like this. This brush is nice, but it's not unique in any way, shape, or form. I do prefer the Sigma High Cheekbone Highlighter F03 over this one, but I'm not sad I have this one. It's okay, uh, and I, I'm happy I got to try it. I do have a video down below using all of these products. I will leave that as well so you can see how it looks. This packaging is very bushy, it's very fingerprinty, but it, it's, it's luxurious for sure. Uh, it, it looks really nice. These highlighters are beautiful though, I have to say. They look great on the skin, they look very glossy and they are a thinner formula so they don't look chunky on the skin. For me I don't feel like they emphasize any texture although I don't really have that much texture so I really maybe shouldn't talk about that. I don't have any I need to come closer. I have another highlighter on today. I have one from Colourpop. I don't really have any texture as you can see on my skin, but I do have some fine lines out here and I don't really feel like this um, emphasizes that. I did say that a formula that I think is pretty similar to this is the Ofra formula and this Gleam is pretty similar to Glazed Donut and this Mesmerized is pretty similar um, to, uh, what is it called, the Bali highlighter, which I love. It's just perfect on me, either on my cheeks as a blush topper or on my cheekbones all over when I have a bit of a tan. I'm not sad I bought this. I think it's a beautiful palette. If you were worried about the quality, I think it's nice. Then I bought this set, which is the mini fan brush that is a J03, and I bought the loose highlighter in Bomb. This isn't the lightest shade, which was extra I think. This is the second to lightest shade. Uh, it looks a bit darker here. It is like a light bronze. This is my skin tone. So on me this looks very wet which is beautiful. I love that. I'm all about that. It is a bit annoying that it is a loose highlighter but I will say that as you can see it's it doesn't like poof up when you open because there are some binders to this formula making it not too loose and not too poofy, which is a really nice thing. So I feel like she did good with the formula even though being a loose highlighter because sometimes you know when you open loose products you open and there's just a cloud, but this one has some binders to it which makes it easier to use. This looks the best over setting spray. So do your entire face, set your face with setting spray and go in with this over. This is a really nice brush as well. I think this is the brush I'm mostly excited about having because it really does, you can really pinpoint this upper and then you can just brush like, it is real, if you like a blinding highlight, if you love that scene from space highlight, this is a really good brush and this is the brush that's the only brush where I'm like, okay, I'm happy I bought this, this is a unique brush to my collection and it works really good with this product. If you hate loose highlighters, I don't buy this, but this is a very blinding highlight, but this color bomb, I mean, the light skin tone, if you are fair, it's gonna be too light for you. If you are of medium skin tone, you might be able to use this one. I'm happy I didn't buy the extra because I don't like an icy highlight, so I'm happy I bought this one. This makes my skin look wet and pretty actually natural and glowy while still being super beamy. It's like my cheeks are wet. Not my favorite product because I'm not all about loose highlighters, but for the like, it works the way it's supposed to work. I do think that this is actually more blinding, though, than this one. This one looks more wet and natural, if that makes any sense. This one looks like you highlighted. This looks like you almost have, like, a glittery Vaseline on your cheeks, or, like, you're just extra dewy. I don't know how to say it. It looks really natural. Just watch the video and you'll see. My favorite product in this uh, whole thing, and... One of my actually like staple products right now, I use this pretty much every time I do a makeup. I brought this to San Francisco. I bought a set with this. This is the biggest brush. This is the J01. I don't like this brush at all. I don't think that this is a good brush. I would never use this with this product. It's too stiff, I feel, for a finishing powder. It's gonna disrupt what's whatever's underneath. I think it's, it's too... The shape and the stiffness, it's... I... This could be used as bronzer. <laughs> Pinpointed bronzer or a soft contour. That's probably how I'm gonna use this brush after I clean it. I don't like it together with a setting or a finishing powder. I don't think that this brush is good for that at all. So if you did end up use, buying this brush, I will use this for bronzer or contour instead because I feel like it's better for that than 
with this product. This is the Luminous Powder. It's not really a setting powder, it's more like a finishing powder. This I got in Brighten Up, which is the like more peachy shade, but this doesn't really give that much color. So for me, this works even though I don't really have a peachy undertone. It's beautiful. It gives your skin a luminous finish unlike any other. So if you are very oily and you like using a super matte foundation, this is going to bring your foundation from that matte that makes your skin like not that makes your skin look good all day. It's going to last on your skin all day, but it brings it to an almost satiny dewy finish, but with powder. I think that this is a great powder. I've been using it like crazy. Um, I don't, I can't really see how much I've been using it. It's a frosted, um, it's like a hard, hard, heavy duty plastic that's frosted. It looks very luxurious, but I love this product. I think that this product is amazing and I've used it so much and it really makes my skin look so good. During my vacation, I used this together with a tinted moisturizer and my skin just looked like I, you know, 12 hours of sleep, three liters of water, like really nice dreams and just touched by the heavens. That's how my skin looked. Beautiful. Don't use this under my eyes though. It's a bit too luminous and like, it's not shimmery, but it's, ugh, it's beautiful. I love this one. Same here. Watch the video. I'm doing this, but I'm not going to put it here. It's down here. Watch the video to see how this looks on my skin. But I have to say, this is my favorite product out of the whole launch. This is the one I've been using the most. This is the one I'm going to continue to use the most. But I think the both of the other products are great as well. Maybe skip on the brushes. You don't need them. They're not that unique. If you feel like you could have use of a brush like this, maybe pick this one up because this is the one that I'm going to continue to use. But yeah, I think that this launch is a good launch from her and I hope that this is a sign of how the company is being run from now on forth. Will though say that the packaging was very excessive and I hope that she mm, pulls back a bit on the packaging because there was just too much packaging in that order. If you And if you've seen the video where I tried these, I talk a bit about that and yeah, it was a bit crazy. But yeah, those were the mini reviews of all of these products. Quite a lot of products, but I needed to get this out of my system so that I can continue, which is gonna be in about a month then, but I'm so excited about this format. I'm so excited that I decided to do this because I feel like there are so many things that I have thoughts on because I try so much makeup and I try it more than once and I wanna give my thoughts on them without having to do separate videos on them. And I feel like this is a good way for me to just tell you quickly, quickly, because I know that this video isn't that, that quick, but tell you quickly about each and every product what I feel about them and if I feel like they're worth picking up. And out of these products, they're, most of them are good. There are some products that I'm like, yeah, don't maybe not buy this one, try this one instead, like the Nabla palette and the Dose of Colors pencil and also some of the Jaclyn brushes. But other than that, I feel like these were good products, but we're gonna see if I feel the same in the in a month when I do the review of the other things because I picked up quite a few things when I was in US. So uh, yeah, I hope you look forward to that. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. If you want to see this look, like I said, it's down in the description box. I leave links and videos and everything to all the things I talked about so that you can easily find them if you want to have more info. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.